Hello and welcome to a second scripting tutorial video. Uh, in the last video, I taught you some basic properties, how to change properties um, of a part using a script. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use all the properties of a part. So, yeah, last last video is just transparency, reflectance, and a few others. And in this video, it's going to be all of them. So, if you just go to Insert Basic Object, double click Part. And now we've got part up. Here we go. So if you click on that, you just see all the properties down here. These are all the properties of a part. So you can you can change them all. Okay. So if you don't have this property thing up, then all you've got to do is go to view, and then properties. Yeah. Okay. And then click on the part, and that's how you get all the properties up. So we're going to start changing the properties using a script. First, I just want to show you like the different properties you can change. So, uh, things like brick color. Um, you can change the size of a brick, the position. So, the position of the brick, where it about it is in the workspace. So, we can move it here like this manually, or we can use a script to change it. Okay, so to insert a script into the part, just click on the part, go to Insert Basic Object, double-click Script. And here we go. Script is inside the part. So this part is a parent to the script. Therefore we can use script.parent to to get the part. And then we can change change different properties like transparency or whatever. Okay, so now that we've got the parts, script.parent, I'm gonna start to go through all the different properties of the part. So the first one is brick color. So let's go script.parent.brick color equals. So here we've got the brick color property of the part so now we need to change it so to change it what we've got to do is we go to the actual colors here these are all the different colors we can change the brick we can change the part to so if you just highlight over one of the colors you can see the name of the color shows up as bright red so we just go to the script you know you can't just go like this you can't just say it's equal to bright red like that there's a the little part that you need to do before that. So you need to type this bit color dot new. Okay. So we have to type this little bit here called bit color dot new. Uh, that's how we change bit color. So you can't just check you can't just type in the name of the color. You've got to type in this little bit here, bit color dot new and then the color inside the brackets and the quotation marks. So now we type it in bright red. Now remember, it's capital letter for B, lowercase R for red. You got to get the cap capital letters right. So just by going over one of the colours, you can see it's capital L here, uh, capital B here, uh, lowercase V for violet. So you got to get all the capitals right. Okay. So now that we've set the brick brick colour of this part to red, let me just. Oops, let me just anchor the part so it doesn't fall. If we click play, it changes to red. Okay, so the next property down is material. Material can be changed like this. You don't need to put anything before the material that you type in. So just find a material that you want, whichever material you want. So let's change it to grass. Okay. There's a list. Of, there's a list of materials you can change it to here. So all these materials you can change the part to. So here we're going to change it to grass. So if we click play, you can see that the brick changes to a grass material. Okay. Uh, I've shown you how to change reflectance and transparency. Just put the number. Uh, part name. Now, the name of the part again is easy to change, just name and then the text that you want it to change it to but then if you change the name of the part so let's change the name of the part to my part okay so if we were to use the game that workspace way of getting the part um, if the part name was still part like it is now we'd access it through part but because we're going to change the name to my part you need to access it through its new name. So game the workspace dot my part dot transparency equals zero point five. 
So now that we've changed the name, we need to call it by its new name. And that should work. Yep, changes it to 0 0.5 transparency. Okay, next one. P position. So things like position, rotation, and all these, they take a vector 3 um, property. So they take a vector 3 value like this. So to change the position of a part, you do script the parent the part dot position equals vector three dot new, and then it takes three different values: the x, y, and z axes. So so y would be going up, up and down like that. Y would be the up, up and down value. Uh, x would be the side to side value and z would be the backward and forward value of the parts. So let me just set the value of the brick to zero, zero, zero. So now it's in the center of the world. Okay, so to get to zoom into your brick, just click this little button here and it will zoom right, right into your brick. And it's just this button here next to the play one. Okay, so we've got a part here. Let's change the y value to 10. So if we click play, we will see that it moves up by 10, like that. If we wanted to change the x value, we do the exact same thing. We would move to the side by 10. Now, we can also make it a minus value, so do minus 10, like that. And just, you can change any property you want. You can change any value you want here. So, yeah, that's how you just, that's how you move it by the x, y, and z value. Okay. Next one is rotation. Now this is just, as you can see, I'll, I'll change it to uh, 0, 0, 20 rotation. Again, this is x, y, and z. So the, here we would be rotating the brick on the z axis. So this is rotating it by 50, say. Oh, that'd be about 50. And again, that uses a vector 3 value. So let me just change it rotation by 45 degrees on the y-axis as you can see it's rotated on the y-axis by 45 degrees because I've put it down here uh, with rotation it goes up to 360 degrees so it's best to keep the rotation under 360 degrees because there's 360 degrees in a circle so if you put 360 then it won't do anything it will just stay like that Okay, so it's just best to have a play around with that to see how it works. Okay, rotation velocity. Um, I'm going to show you how to do velocity first and then we'll go to rotation velocity. So, velocity, again, using the vector 3 value. Velocity, now this is what velocity does. I'm just going to show you. Okay. Let me just take that out first. Um, I'm going to do a quick example of how velocity works. I'm making a quick path like that. And then making a part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this part on that part, which has velocity of 5. So I'm going to change the velocity to f uh, on the x-axis by f to 5, 0, 0. And now if I click play, oops, I need to unanchor this to drop it, you can see that it moves. So this part now has velocity and it can move more, if you, it can move a part if you drop it on, if you drop a part onto it. So let's set the velocity to minus five on the x-axis and watch this part move along. Okay, so this part is now moving along here. If we set it to a high value, so minus 15, it'd move faster, faster. Okay. So to do that in a script, it's the exact same thing. Just it's the exact same thing. Just change it to whatever value you want. It's best to just have just have a play around with it. Play around with all the different values. See what you can do. So here I'm going to set the velocity to minus 10 on the x 
axes and as you can see here I'm going to set it to zero here zero 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 here so when I click play it will automatically change to minus 10 if I unanchor this then you can see it moves okay so that's how things like train tracks and Roblox are made okay next one is rotation velocity if I make this a bit wider then you can see how this works right so by setting rotation velocity it basically rotates the part so I set it to 5 on the x-axis what we would do is this well that's gone quite weird um, what it's meant to do is meant to ro rotate the part don't know why it wasn't working I set it to 5 on the y-axis okay yeah you can see how it's just rotated the part it's like a little spiral if you drop a part onto it it just starts rotating round and round and round like that with rotation velocity and you do the exact same thing in the script so script.parent.rot velocity equals vector 3 uh, it's still a vector 3 value just change the x y or z value to whichever one you want okay things like anchored are tribable can collide and locked anchored is um, I'll show you how to change anchored. I think I showed you that in the last tutorial. Anchored equals true. It can be either true or false. If you set the anchored value to true, it means that it is anchored and it won't fall out of the sky. If it's set to false, then it means that the part is not anchored and it will just fall out of the sky. Okay. The next property is can collide. Remember to get the capital C and then for can, capital C for collide. Okay. If this value, can collide of a part, is set to true, it means that when a person walks into the part, they collide with it and they can't go through it. But if it's set to false, then if someone was to go through the part, then they just walk straight through it. Okay. Next one is R charitable. If this is set to false, then it means that you can't copy or save the part. So if this was unarchived, then, so now I said it's unarchived. Again, this is a true or false value. True if it's checked like that. False if it's unchecked. If it was false, when I save the part, uh, if I save the place, this part won't save. So it just delete it when it saves. And also I won't be able to copy it. So I can't actually copy this part. I'm pressing Control C, Control V. I can't copy it. But if it's true, I can copy it. Okay. Uh, next property down is locked. Okay, if locked is false, then I can select it in the workspace. If it's true, then I can't select it. So I'm clicking it, but I can't select it. I'll have to select it through the explorer. Okay. Uh, next property is elasticity. It mean this one is basically how bouncy, how bouncy it is, how bouncy the part is. So if you play around with that. So it's a different values. It's the same thing in a script. The last to see if I can spell it right. Just set it to whatever value you want, and then that's how bouncy the bouncy the part is. So if you were to drop another part on top of it, it would bounce to a different height. So depending on how bouncy it is. Uh, form factor. Okay, this is a good one. Okay, if the form factor is set to brick, then well. When you're resizing it, um, how do I explain this? Let's do a better one. Symmet symmetric. If it's symmetric, then you can't get decimal values in the size. Okay, so the size has to be a whole number. You can't put size of 1.5. It have to be a whole number. Okay, but if it's something like custom, then you can have decimal points for the size. You can set it to 2.2. You can set it to 0 0.2, make it really thin like that. So that's how symmetric is. Uh, and then plate, it's 0 0.4. Uh, just again, play around with it, see how it works. And you set it like this. Form factor. 
script up here in the form factor equals you don't need to put anything before it just puts symmetric sim I can't spell today okay symmetric and that's how you set it in a script okay next one down friction um, okay so if the friction let me just give you an example by rotating this part uh, like this okay so I've rotated a part I'm going to create a new part on top of it like that and I'm going to raise it up and anchor it okay so now if I were to click play this part would just drop down and fall down to the ground like that okay uh, just messed up the position Okay, so, but if I were to change the friction of the part, like this, so I set its friction to 2, then, oh, I need to unanchor it, then it'd be harder for the part to slide down, because there's more friction, therefore it'd slide slower, because it's, it's kind of harder for the part to slide down it. As you can see, it's not falling that fast anymore. So again, friction is another value you can just play around with. Set it to all different values, see how it works. Do the same thing in the script. So friction equals one or two. Okay. Uh, let me just set the rotation to zero, zero, zero. Next, va va next property, size. Size is a vector three value. Size equals vector three dot new three 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 boom when we click play it sets the size to okay it's not done it it should uh, here we go when I click play it sets the size to three 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 x three y three z three okay and that's how you change size you just it's a vector 3 value, just mess around with the numbers. Okay, next property is okay, all these surface surface inputs, uh, these all have something to do with motors. So if I were to put a motor uh, by clicking this button here and then clicking the surface of this part, right, if I were to put a motor on that part by doing that, so this button here, click the surface of this part to add a motor then by changing all these surface inputs so if I go to the top parameter here because this is, this is the top surface of this part if I were to go to the top top param A top param B if I were to change one of these values like to 1 it would make the motor faster and constant and all this stuff this is like a constant spin of the motor so it just keeps spinning and this value here changes the speed of the motor so it's one of the things they just have to play around with. It's not really used that much. I mean, I don't use it that much in scripting, but you change it normally, like here. Script parent dot top param b. It's changed the same, so you change it with an integer value, like a number. Just put a number there to change it. Okay. So let's skip past all these surface inputs then and go to surface. Okay, so these are the surfaces of the brick so if I change the top, top surface to something like uh, studs it puts studs on the top I can change it to smooth and it make it smooth I can change it to hinge it stick a hinge on there like here and this is weld so that's that's how you change all the um, surfaces you can also do it from here by clicking these buttons up here if I wanted to make add studs and click this little button here and then click the surface and now it's got studs and you do the same thing here so in the script script.parent dot top surface or bottom surface whichever surface you want to change equals smooth remember make sure you've got it into quotation marks you can't just stick it like that that won't work you need to have it into quotation marks to make it work so that changes the top surface of the part. 
Okay, so yeah, that's all the properties of a part. Uh, you can get properties of a script by clicking the script. These are the properties of a script. Uh, if you were to insert something else, like basic object, insert a vehicle seat, for instance, you could change. So if you stick this onto a car, you could change how fast the car goes by changing the max speed. You can change properties of all. You can change yeah the value of all different properties of any object, and you can do the same thing in a script. So um, yeah, so that's how you change all the different properties. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'm probably going to do something different. No more properties. Something fun next tutorial. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's it for this tutorial. See ya.